Galician Russophilia was a movement based in Galicia that advocated for the idea that the local Ruthenian population was part of the greater Russian nation, and that they should therefore join the Russian Empire instead of remaining as part of Austria. It was often reactionary in its political leanings, and found support throughout large swaths of the literate population. It began to rise in the middle of the 19th century, as it subsumed the old Ruthenian movement, which itself had been unfocused, often loyal to the Austrian crown, and unable to decide on things like the standardization of language or identity. By the 1850s and 1860s, Galician Russophilia was the predominant force in Galicia, with some of the most prominent leaders being Ivan Naumovich, Denis Zobritsky, and Jakub Holovatsky. An important work, and what some consider to be the most foundational article of the Galician Russophiles, was an article named Glimpse into the Future, or Pogliad v Budushnost, published in 1866 by Ivan Naumovich. In it, he outlined the issue with the historical loyalty that Galician Ruthenians had with Austria, and how their inability to vouch for the interests of the Galician Ruthenian population during the formation of what would become Austria-Hungary put them in a terrible position for the future. The Ruthenian approach had been to make no real demands to the government, whereas those like the Poles had been vocal regarding their needs. In consequence, they got significant concessions in Galicia, but the Ruthenians did not. He believed that if there was no change in their strategy, they would become fully Polonized, and that the attempt to create a new Western Ruthenian nation was doomed to fail. He also claimed that the people of Galicia should adopt the Russian language as the official literary language instead of local vernacular. In some ways, like the need for change and strategy, he was completely correct. And in others, like the claim that the project of a new Ruthenian nation, or Ukrainian one, was doomed to fail, proved to be incorrect. Regardless, this letter would really energize a movement that continued on through the 1870s and 1880s, where by this time it would be met with strong opposition by the Ukrainophiles. Spurred on by Ukrainian immigrants from the Dnieper, the Ukrainophiles proved to be much more adept at rallying the local peasantry and adopting local culture to fit their movement. Opposite to this, there was no real Russian immigration to Galicia to help bolster their movement, and it was often the reverse in that Galician Russophiles would immigrate to Russia and quickly assimilate into the greater Russian ethos. Their ideas were seen by many as elitist as well. The majority of the population could not read Russian nor speak it. Therefore, the majority of the work produced by the Russophiles in Galicia was inaccessible, whether this be writing in Russian or Yazitra. Between the 1880s and World War I, the Russophiles would gradually lose out in the battle over the identity of Galicia, with the death knell being the mass killings and imprisonment of the remaining population in Tallerhof and other operations. It should be noted that still at this point in 1914, there was a significant percentage of the population that still identified as Russian or Ruthenian rather than Ukrainian. Though the Ukrainophiles were usually more adept in their strategy, they also gained significant benefits from the Austrian government, which consequently gave them an advantage. For example, they could operate much more freely with their organizations without needing to publicly prove they were not aligned with Russia, and in some instances, they also received secret funding to bolster their cause. By the end of the interwar period, the remaining population would eventually either emigrate abroad, assimilate into Ukrainianness, or immigrate to the Soviet Union. With them, the last vestiges of Galician Russophilia would die. In the next two episodes of this three-part miniseries, we'll be taking a deeper dive into what exactly the Galician Russophile philosophy was, and the intricacies of their failure to win in the ideological battle against the Ukrainophiles. In short, this is just a small introduction and just the beginning. See you next time.